Hey everybody, welcome back to Bucket of Chum. This is a bonus episode for the YouTube channel. So today I am going to be reviewing a movie called Older Gods from 2023, directed by David A. Roberts. I was sent a screener by Wagyu Film, so thank you guys so much for sending this over to me. I just wanted to give a short review on this movie. I was supposed to do something a little bit longer probably earlier on, but as some of you know, there was a bunch of stuff going on in my apartment and whatnot. So I haven't been able to do all the things I've wanted to, but I was very grateful for them for sending the screener over, so I definitely wanted to do something for it. So let's go and do what we always do and get into the plot synopsis right off of Letterboxd. After the disappearance of his troubled friend, American Chris Rivers travels to the remote Welsh countryside to investigate what happened, leading him to a dark, apocalyptic cult. So I, I don't know if anybody really knows this, but I do really enjoy cult movies and whatnot. So this movie already appealed to me, but what also appealed to me was that it has like a very Lovecraftian sort of story to it and style when you're watching the movie. So like overall, this movie was really good. I don't want to go into too much details because I, I do want people to actually watch this movie if it's something that they would be interested in. I, I want to set up your expectations, though. So it is a slow burn of a movie. It's very much uh, character-driven, and the isolation of the location kind of helps play into the story a little bit as well. And like I said, it has a very Lovecraftian feel to it. So like I said, it's a slow burn. And if you've ever read any of his stories, they're not all like very super fast-paced or not even as like crazy as you see some of the movies to be like the adaptations of like the beyond and whatnot. So this is like almost, it's almost like it to me feels like an unwritten story by HP Lovecraft in a way, which I really enjoyed. What's also impressive is I believe this was filmed during the pandemic. So it was a very small crew, um, very small cast as well. And it, it doesn't need a bigger cast. Cause like I said, it most it mostly takes place on the countryside which helps play into like the paranoia and the whole cult aspect of it as well. And listen, I used to live in the country. So having like empty fields and woods all around you and not really knowing like what the hell's going on sometimes can be pretty fucking scary. So I kind of identified with this taking place in the countryside and that feeling of isolation and being scared and alone or whatever. So yeah, I kind of really enjoyed that. I mean, that's also kind of why I enjoyed things like the Blair Witch Project as well, because just being being in the woods to me is fucking scary, especially at night. Uh, I don't recommend it. I've done it a couple times, and I just, I wouldn't. It's scary. Even if you don't believe in ghosts and whatnot, there's kind of, like, fucking animals out there and shit that you can't see. So it's just, it's just best not to. But yeah, as I said, uh, it was painted for me in this email that it is a slow burn, uh, very character-driven, and it doesn't rely on gore. Now, you all know I'm a big fan of gore and, like, my violence in movies, but I don't think that every movie needs that, because if you have a good story, then you don't really need any of that. It, if you want to put that in there and have a good story, like, fuck yeah, I'm all for it. But this movie doesn't need the gore. It really doesn't need it that much. There's not even a lot of special effects in the movie, per se, but the when they do show up, whether it's visual effects or practical effects, it's very well done for what is seems like a very small production. It does a great job of making you feel isolated. And again, like filming during the pandemic probably really helped that um, feeling, you know, because we're all being cut off from the world and whatnot. So I think actually filming during the pandemic for this movie actually really helped. It probably helped the actors a little bit too, I would imagine. I would sort of compare this to... A Dark Song, if anybody's seen that movie from 2017. It's just another example of another slow burn movie that's done really well. Again, not a whole lot of effects, uh, very minimal locations. Like, uh, Dark Song takes place in one house, I believe, for most of the movie. And it's just two characters for the most part. But it's a really good movie, and it's a slow burn, very character driven. And that's kind of what this is, and I really enjoyed that. Um, I have a dark song on Blu-ray as well, so I'm not just saying I like those kinds of movies. Just because I watch a lot of crazy shark exploitation movies, I don't need all of my movies to be wild and crazy. Like watching something like this is honestly kind of a nice relief because like the acting was really good, the cinematography was really nice. I just I liked everything about this movie, and I think you can really feel that the team behind it, the cast and the crew, were really passionate about it, and I love that stuff. That stuff to me really comes through on camera. Uh, like more recently with Monkey Man and Dev Patel, like he ran out of money and he filmed stuff on an iPhone and GoPro. 
And that, like that kind of stuff really translates. So when the filmmakers behind it are really passionate about the project, it comes through on screen to me. And I think this definitely comes through on screen for me. There is also a whole lot of behind the scenes videos available, which I will link down below. So yeah, if you wanna know more, please check them out. Follow them on Instagram, Wagyu Films, uh, Older Gods. I was sent a screener, but I do believe you can rent this on Amazon Prime. So I do recommend it if it sounds like your cup of tea, like slow burn horror. Again, I, I compare it to a dark song. I'm not saying it's exactly the same movie. It's definitely not, but I'm just saying if you like that type of movie, you will probably find something to enjoy about this. Uh, but yeah, that's all I have for this. You guys know you can follow me on all the social medias at Bucket of Chum Podcast. That's Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Slasher. And again, don't forget to follow Wagyu Films. And thank you guys so much again for sending me this screener. And if you or anybody else um, has an indie movie that you would like me to do a trailer react or uh, send me a screener, I'm more than willing to do it. I love just helping indie horror um, it doesn't have to be aquatic horror related. I'm just willing to support indie horror in any way that I can. So again, thank you guys so much. And I'll see you guys next time for more Bucket of Chum.